What do we got today? We have a lot of white cards. I do like white cards. So we have one Flame Fist Dust Guard is solid. Horn of a Hollow was not like great, but was fine last time we played it. Two Steadfast Paladins is nice. Lulu is solid. Priest is solid. Hippogriff is good. Disciples, I'm still not sure how to feel about this. It, it's felt... The games that I've lost to Disciples felt like I lost because I fell behind on tempo, and Disciples is a crushing card when you are already ahead on tempo. But I don't know if that like makes the card good. Confronted by Robbers, I think is solid. Pegasus, I'm not really certain on. Ranger Squadron is solid. Soon's Intervention is good. And Ancient Gold Dragon is... Uh, aside from the red one, just because it costs less mana, I think this is the best of the Ancient Gold Dragons, or the Ancient Dragons for limited. Seven mana, a lot of toughness, pretty much wins the game if it hits, even if it doesn't kill them, because a bunch of flying chump blockers are stellar. I guess they can still drain you out, but you have a lot of blockers. <laughs> like, even rolling a three is probably enough to win. Most of the time, I would imagine. In blue, we have Hypnotic Pattern has been fine, but again, is there anything at all that pulls us into blue? Literally nothing. Okay, no blue. I should check. Okay, so John, Irenicus, and OG technically might pull us into blue, but unless we want to splash Irenicus, which doesn't really warrant splashing any of the bad blue cards because they're already bad is the reason we don't want to play blue. Not, like, particularly... I don't think that I'm liable to play blue in, like, 95% of sealed decks. At least not as a main or secondary color. All right. So black has... Shambling Gas is fine. Sepulchre Ghoul is good. Vaconia is good. Skullport Merchant's good. Grim Bounty's good. Servox solid. Uh, that's about it. So solid cards. Not a huge amount of depth. Red has Dragon's Fire is good, Rebel Rouser is fine, Captain's fine. Craving has looked pretty solid every time that I've seen it. Fire Beetle is a solid, Improvised Weaponry is solid. Uthgard Fury is excellent. That definitely starts pulling us to red. Valor Singer is fine, Fireball is fine, Warriors of Tiamat is good, Earth Cult is solid. Null Hunting Party is very solid. That card's quite appealing. Green has two Myconids, no top end. Has a Raga Draga. Well, all right. So two Myconids plus Raga Draga and a Walrus. That's, I mean, Myconid becoming a 3-4 is kind of... Interesting. At least seven mana was spent to cast it. Untap target creature. We have precisely one seven mana spell. I'm kind of interested in what green, white, splashing red might look like. Green looks something like this. In red, we would want to splash Raga Draga, Knoll Hunting Party. Uh, Uthgard Fury is hard to splash. I guess Reckless Barbarian actually works with Raga Draga. I mean, I could just do green red. So that's one option. I cannot just do green-red. 
Oh, okay. So we can do Valor Singers, Fire Beetle, Hobgoblin Captain. Yeah, I just like wicked don't have enough playables. I'm hyper scraping the bottom of the barrel if I just do green red. Okay. So the green's not really adding enough. But white is pretty solid. Hmm. <sighs> All right, definitely too many expensive things. I don't know where to think of Null Hunting Party as far as a curve. It's probably like closer to a four or five drop than anything else. Don't really think we need the Bronze Walrus, but and it does ramp and scry too. So like it's, I don't think this is a card you're ever allowed to not play. Ramp in any color plus scry two on a two, two for three has got to like be a rate that you're just not allowed to not play in sealed, right? Iron Golem's good in white red. There's a four mana five three that attacks each combat. That kind of works with Blessed Hippogriff. Yeah, I think that it's reasonable. Icewind Stalwart blinks priest. Only blinks creatures. So it blinks Priest and Flame Fist Dust Guard, and that's kind of it. So that's not terribly interesting. Hmm. What else would we want to cut here? I don't think Black has... the depth that red has to be worth pairing with the white, and I don't think that it has the value that white gives with Ancient Gold Dragon and Soon's Intervention. I mean, it's got Vaconia, which is fine. Black might be capable of being more aggressive than red-white if we go black-red, but... Uh, it's, it's just so thin. You get Shambling Gas, Two Ghouls, Viconia, Skullport, Grim Bounty, Servok, and like that's it. Certainly solved my problem of figuring out what to cut, but gives me a different problem that I don't really like having. Alright, yeah, I definitely think we're trying to figure out a cut here, then. We have probably too many three drops. I kind of dig Valor Singer with the Steadfast Paladins, but it's not the end of the world if we don't play it. I kind of want a lot of two drops if my job is to be aggressive. I could probably cut the Rabble Rouser live with four two drops. I would prefer five. How do we feel about craving of Yinagu? Hmm. I feel like I have to test this card out at the very least. I definitely think that it warrants experimenting. I need two whole cuts, huh? I really need to play more with Ranger Squadron, so I don't want to cut it. 
<sighs> Everything kind of fills a useful role here. All right, of my three drops, I think Valor Singer is the most cuttable. Oh dear, I definitely can't cut a land when I've got a seven drop. Horn of Valhalla, I'm not usually like the biggest fan of, but I've got a Lulu, I've got a Blessed Hippogriff, I've got two Steadfast Paladins that kind of reward it. It's probably one of the weaker cards here. But I would like to experiment with it. Alright, I'm gonna trim the Ranger Squadron. We'll probably get a use for it at some point. I don't know that trimming it is actually correct. Perhaps it's more correct to trim either a Rabble Rouser or a Hobgoblin Captain. Uncertain. But I think this is where we jam it for the time being. Alright, what do we got? No white sources, but improvised weaponry and a pretty good card. I guess that's sort of fine. Maybe? We're on the draw? I mean, it's limited, so I'm not gonna mulligan if I have three lands. That's kind of the deal. Alright. Lands is a good start. My opponent plays a creature, and it draws a card when it ETBs. Makes my improvised weaponry a lot less... Favoring me? The exchange? Not as good? Exchange not as good. That's what I want to go with. <sighs> let's see, let's see. I could Uthgard Fury that. I don't really want to. I think I'm probably just supposed to play the Disciples. Next turn, if I want to, I can use my treasure to play with Guard Fury and Lulu. I'd rather use the treasure to start getting towards Ancient Gold Dragon, though. Bronze Walrus, sure. So I could Fury the Walrus. I could Fury the Emulator, too. Oop. All right. Here goes my poor little 2-3. All right, so we gotta land. Think we're making a bunch of 3-3s three then. Or well, a bunch of 1-1s, one 3-1-1s one one specifically. We save our treasure, which lets us play Ancient Gold Dragon next turn, which means the opponent's kind of forced to have an answer for it. It's pretty tough for them to have a hard removal spell for it in red-green. Red-green having a lot of removal that's based on toughness. Green does have some straight-up plummet effects, though, that would be disappointing. So I could try to bait out a plummet effect by playing the Lulu first. Given that the opponent hasn't actually presented, like, anything particularly meaningful as a threat, I think I kind of want to give that a go? Actually, I get an interesting choice here. I could play the Lulu to try to bait the plummet. Uh, yeah. I was debating if I wanted to play the Steadfast Paladin in this turn, so that it, on the few, on a, my next turn, essentially, I could play Horn plus equip the Steadfast Paladin to start attacking with a gigantic lifelinker. But I think developing the Lulu, giving flying to the Steadfast Paladin. My life total is high enough that I can afford to kind of sit around dirtling that. And I think that does more to attempt to bait out the flying removal spell before I jam Ancient Gold Dragon. Whew. 
And there's also the possibility that I could have just played the Ancient Gold Dragon, they wouldn't have the removal spell, and I would have been doing totally fine, but, eh. Yeah. King Esquire, thanks for the raid. Ugh. How'd your stream go? Thanks for joining us, by the way, as well. Alright, no need for blocks. Technically, I could trade. I don't really want to. Okay. Well, the more times they pump this, the more I take a not terribly significant amount of damage. Okay. So they didn't really manage to accomplish anything there. Don't dislike land. Also, oh, hello kitty. They have now splashed white, which gives them a lot more removal options. Let's just have a giant flying lifelink. Oh, don't pump the microphone, kitty. Giant flying lifelink blocker. Which hopefully does a very, very good job of baiting a removal spell this turn. Which means that my next turn's Ancient Gold Dragon should be safely lightning rotted. Played two seal tonight, one Boros and one Mardu. Really like the colors in seal. Yeah, that's the three color pairs that I think I have definitely been pulled into the most often, just off the strength of deep common and uncommon pools. Green has solid filler, but it seems like it has a lower percentage of good filler, so you just more rarely end up with pools that support green. All right, well, I will block. I don't really want to risk the Paladin. Not if I don't need to. Earth Cult Elemental, that's fine. I've got a treasure that I can sacrifice with no real concerns whatsoever. So the opponent could not answer the giant Steadfast Paladin. That's probably going to be a pretty good sign for our capacity to win this game. So amusingly, actually, this is getting pretty much single-handedly won by Horn of Valhalla currently. Okay, improvised weaponry is not really a real issue. Oh, we're just gonna chill with our 710 that wins the game if it ever connects. And also are sitting here with a 6 6 that just kinda wins the game if it ever connects. <laughs> yeah, we do have synergy between Horn of Valhalla and Ancient Gold Dragon in that after Ancient Gold Dragon hits and we have won the game, we do win the game even harder. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so I played that hyper safe, and it turns out that there was no reason, or no need to play that safe to win it. But I think it was probably still correct to have played that slower, given the strength of our position. Now, let's see. We're gonna be on the draw against green-red... Hmm, I don't really want to play Disciples on the draw. I'm pretty confident that's not what I'm supposed to do. I guess I kind of can experiment with your Ambushed on the Road as one mana plus one plus three. It's not as good as the Indestructible Combat Tricks, but I, it is kind of close against Green-Red to the same thing. It pairs well with my two drops that are probably going to have to be playing slightly defensively. I will not be keeping zero lands plus seven drop. Three lands plus seven drop, however. How do we feel about that? Hmm. I gotta say, this is actually a wicked uninspiring hand. 
but I will also also say I think if we are going to have a strategy that pulls us back from being on the draw and having mulliganed and not having early things to do, it's going to be keeping the 7 drop that just wins the game on its own. No, opponent! You were supposed to play something that I could improvise weaponry. Oh dear. Oh dear. Alright, well... Land drops aren't bad. If my opponent's doing absolutely nothing, am I just supposed to play Blessed Hippogriff out to develop a blocker? I certainly don't have anything to give indestructibility to. So I think I'm mostly just supposed to develop the blocker. It's not useful yet, but it might be useful on a later turn. Eh, alright. Faraday's Fireball for the Owl Bear is something we're allowed to cast. My opponent has six mana, has cast essentially no cards other than a lantern of revealing and still has nothing to do what that's deeply confusing and possibly horrifying it means they might like only have seven drops in hand i'm excited about the possibility that our soon's intervention will blow up the lantern of revealing Okay, well, they hit more land drops. I guess they could also only have lands, is the other possibility here. Have they just been holding a Blessed Hippogriff this entire time instead of playing it? Off the splash? No? Ugh. Don't like Fireball hurting me. Not the most cool. Okay. So they kill my 2-3, and then do nothing? Okay. Well. I expect they're going to activate the lantern. Oh, no kitty, don't go up there. Ah, oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to stop here. So after they make this decision is when I'm going to intervention to blow up the lantern. I want them to make the decision assuming that they've got the color fixing on the off chance they're trying to... No, kitty cat. Splash a fourth color. They do choose top. Boop, 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 boop. Blow up the artifact. I would like to gain some life and make some tutus. Valor Singer is... Totally fine. Improvised weaponry gets us up to Ancient Gold Dragon next turn. It wouldn't surprise me, given the amount of nothing that they've been doing, that they might have a, an abundance of removal options that they kept or brought in to deal specifically with Ancient Gold Dragon. Well, Lucamina's very powerful. They can specialize that immediately. That's gonna be a problem. I wouldn't mind shrinking the craving of Yinagu. Or putting it in the graveyard somehow. So that we could like potentially get a hasty ancient gold dragon. Would take eight mana, but that's definitely an interesting option. Okay, I would like to convince them to trade with this in order to get more Lucamina value, because that puts the craving in the graveyard, and then I can improvise weaponry to Lucamina to get the treasure that I want to do the Ancient Gold Dragon combo. I will be disappointed if the opponent just takes the five, though. 
There we go. That's what we were looking for. All right. And then we get to kill it. All right. So now top decking a land will be absolutely excellent. Life might be awkward if I, you know, completely fail to top deck a land for a long time, but I guess then I'm just top decking spells that I can cast, which is probably fine. Like, I don't care how many times I recast this craving for the sake of the Ancient Gold Dragon. It could give minus five toughness for the Ancient Gold Dragon, and it would still be absolutely, totally fine. So I can just throw this around willy-nilly. Want to block just to prevent extra damage here? Maybe. I mean, I definitely am not getting very much use out of this 2-2 while Lazel's crowding up the board. So I think the trade is fine by me. Opponent specializes, makes a bunch of tokens. That's not ideal. Alright, well, let's crowd up the board then. Well, can definitely still punch us for six with that lazel, which is a problem. Can Craving target only my stuff? Uh, yes. Right. Hobgoblin down. Disappointing for the chump blocking purposes. I also really don't want to... Yeah, four four is annoying. I might just have to play the Ancient Gold Dragon. Well, my opponent's empty-handed, actually, so playing the Ancient Gold Dragon now... Is that... Yeah, all right. This is just totally fine. Especially because now they've got a flying blocker anyway. All right, so they have to top deck an answer to it. If they don't, we get Dragon's Fire to clear the way. That's not going to do it. Well, I mean, presumably it's not going to do it. Dragonfire plus Ancient Gold Dragon's real solid. Alright, eight damage in the air. I would like to roll a decent number. Seven's good enough. Ooh, card Fury sounds great. Okay. Do I want a Craving just for the sake of better blocks? Hmm. Gives plus one toughness at the moment. Yeah, why not? I think what I'm worried about here is, like, them playing a two damage to everything board wipe. And then attacking. That still would only be eight damage, though. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm worried about. I guess I'm worried about them killing Ancient Gold Dragon, but as long as I can make a block that doesn't lose Fairy Dragons or Valor Singer, even if they kill Ancient Gold Dragon, I'm still fine. I guess the board wipe would be, like, the one thing that beats me in this position because it wipes my board and leaves them with a lazel. But, okay. Educational value, Ancient Gold Dragon, pretty good. Especially if the opponent never has any removal at all. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. I mean, we got two drops. That's a curve. I don't know whether I want to play the 3-1 first and then make the Steadfast Paladin bigger. Or play the Steadfast Paladin so it can actually attack. 
I'd be inclined to play the Steadfast Paladin on two more aggressively if I was on the play. It, was, it would be more likely that it could attack on turn three. But it's less likely it can attack into a three drop. But, also that said, Valor Singer pumping Steadfast Paladin allows it to attack through three drops. It said Valor Singer pumping Flame Fist Dust Guard attacks for four. That's an even faster clock, even if I'm not gaining life. And admittedly, my opponent isn't being aggressive here. So I think I just want to put more power on the board faster. Yeah, Skullport Merchant does not uh, block a 4 1. So there we go, I guess. That's sort of successful, right? You don't often get to swing through a Skullport Merchant while on the draw. I mean, this exchange for them is still pretty fine, blocking with the Skullport Merchant. They already got the treasure out of it. But, I mean, trading up on Curve is still very reasonable for me. So OG scries two. Gains two life. Doesn't block Valor Singer. I believe I want to try to bait them into prioritizing casting spells in a way that blinks the OG. Or do I just want to kill the OG? I think I want to not kill the OG here and try to convince them to play two spells. Okay, well, if they're just going to pass the turn, I'm kind of walking into them potentially having two spells here, which I don't think I want to do. I wasn't expecting them to do nothing. We did draw a pretty good card. Let's us spend all of our mana. So am I willing to just trade Steadfast with OG? I think so. Okay. Why are we killing the Paladin and not the Valor Singer? Because of that lifelink? Really? Huh. Okay. Were they holding up the counter unless I pay two effect there, hoping to hit my post-combat thing and blink the OG? Really not terribly certain what my opponent's plan was there. Craving, huh? So I could certainly craving the fire beetles here. Eh? I mean, that seems pretty good. Unless they have a removal spell in response to it, in which case that's pretty not good. Because then I also get denied my ability to play my second Fire Beetles. But I do want to pressure my opponent. But I am also flooding out. Cast down is a possibility here. They probably would have cast downed at sorcery speed if they had one. I think we're pumping the fire beetle. So they do have a response here. Interesting. Okay, well, what else do you got, opponent? If they go for a double block, they lose both of their creatures, and I don't even lose an entire card. So that sounds fine to me. Deadly Dispute. Okay. I'm pretty fine with that. Think it's worth developing the Fire Beetles here. So that also is probably the spell that they were holding up when they passed with two mana a couple of turns ago. 
So I guess I'm actually really happy I haven't dragon fired the OG. I mean, it would have removed the OG, but I don't think them having an OG in play is the end of the world either. Yeah, Lulu. We have a second spell to gain some life. They should attack before playing a second spell if that's the case. So they missed two damage. And this wasn't even the adventure, right? This is just the actual altar of bones. Looking to loop back Skullport Merchant? Oh, probably looking to discard something to the Lulu and then reanimate a giant thing, most likely. Hmm. Opponent goes to one. No, 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 no. Okay, that was the adventure. The animation just didn't really look like it. Okay, so they can't discard something and reanimate it next turn. That's good to know. I do actually think I want the Moradin's Disciples. It's a really powerful card to give haste if we end up losing our menaced craving creature. I guess we hold on to the mountain? I don't remember if I have any specialized creatures or not. Rubbing all that cardboard key. We get the tail in frame? Oh yeah, we can. Okay, and I don't know how my opponent gets out of this. Actually, come to think of it, did my opponent? No, they did blink the OG last turn, yeah. Okay. Right, because they missed the two damage. So we have two lethal normal threats. Two lethal menace threats. We have a way to have lethal through a board wipe. Even if the board wipe left them a creature, we would still have a way to have lethal. Actually, even if they, even if they play a board wipe that completely wipes my board and puts two creatures into play, we can still beat them. So... Our position is kind of acceptable. <laughs> yeah? You having fun? He really loves rubbing the seat adjustment knob <laughs> on my chair. <laughs> Meanwhile, on opponent's side of the table. Are we doing any nonsense here? Eh, whatever. I've got the mana to do whatever I want. I respect bluffing to the extent that maybe I don't attack with everything, opponent. But, like, don't you think you should let me actually decide to make the attack if you're going to go through this much <laughs> waiting around? <sighs> okay. So, we're on the draw again. I'm still not sure how to feel about Morden's Disciples on the draw. I guess Craving does make it a little better, though. Come to think of it, I, I feel like I've appreciated this particular synergy before, but the one mana Cobalt that gives haste, I think the Moradin card, or Disciples of Moradin card in particular, synergizes with that even above and beyond what most cards do. 
That card having haste is such a wildly more powerful card than that card without haste. This is a lot of our very good cards, but I do not want to keep it with one mana. This is not a lot of our very good cards, but I am much more willing to keep it with one mana. Do I want to keep Faraday's Fireball over Giant Fire Beetle? I guess not. I should probably just keep more three drops if I'm going to be keeping this one lander and crossing my fingers. What's the best color? There aren't really best colors in sealed because the best color is different for every pool. It's not like you can go in with any information about your opinions on colors viabilities relative to one another, dictating what the correct way to build a particular pool is. This is radical. Oh, our opponent missed a land drop. Cool. And somehow... Oh, okay, bye kitty. Somehow us keeping a one lander has resulted in not missing land drops at all. Quite the opposite. We're playing ramp spells that are ramp spells and also fix our land drops. Fancy that. I mean, I should probably play Priest of Ancient Lore... But I can always play Priest of Ancient Lore next turn. I kind of want to play the Valor Singer so I can start getting in damage. No, I don't want to do that. Because they absolutely can have a combat trick here. In fact, they're kind of likely to. Alright, that was a mistake. I think Valor Singer was the wrong play. It was either Priest of Ancient Lore to try to hit the land drop and not need to play Priest of Ancient Lore next turn. Or it was Giant Fire Beetles to develop the Menace Attacker. Or my opponent can just concede because they don't hit lands. Sometimes you keep one landers and nothing goes wrong at all. All right. We are once again on the draw. How would I rate the sealed? I, I'm i digging this sealed more than I was the very first day. I think I got a sequence of games and pools that made the first day feel way more bomb-oriented than subsequent days have led me to believe. I'm digging this sealed, but I generally dig most sealed. I kind of want to ship the Bronze Walrus here, which feels weird because our deck definitely has use for the ramp. There's no way it's correct to ship the Bronze Walrus, but I kind of want to go turn three Lulu into turn four Moradin's Disciples, but I'm on the draw. Hmm. Okay, we'll ship the Lulu. The top three commons on 70 lands are white. I'll believe that. Although, it's worth noting that I don't think that data is for sealed. And commons with synergy tend to be, in relative terms, stronger in draft, where you can build around synergy, than they are in sealed, where you have to rely on cards kind of just inherent strength more in a vacuum. Not entirely in a vacuum, because you can just randomly get synergies, but, like, the black-white blink synergies don't really exist. Or, they do exist, but they don't... You don't get to build around them as much. But, many of the black-white blink cards are just good in a vacuum, so it doesn't matter whether you have the synergy or not, like Priest of Ancient Lore. The 4-drop 3-3 three, three that blinks a creature, however, is a good example of a card that... I don't think is excellent even in draft, but is probably much better in a typical draft deck than it is in a typical sealed deck. Oh no, my opponent played a 3-mana three 3-2. Three it's almost like they're playing blue. Hmm. Now, I don't want to let them draw a card if they play a removal spell on my Priest of Ancient Lore. So I could hold back with the Steadfast Paladin and not choose to gain 2 life and not do 2 damage to my opponent in order to play maximum defense. Do I want to play maximum defense? I don't think I do. Also, the end result of me playing Priest of Ancient Lore and drawing a card and them using a removal spell on my 2-1 only for them to draw a card is that I took 3 damage, they took 2 damage, and I gained 2 damage. 
which like I think actually favors me, especially because it means they spent their turn four playing a removal spell instead of playing something proactive. So I think this is just completely fine. Oh, also I gain a life with Priest of Ancient Lore, so I literally don't take any damage if they hit me with a Soul Knife Spy anyway. So I'm going to get to go turn 4 Morden's Disciple, turn 5 Warriors of Tiamat, and that sounds probably fun. Oh, we're not going to... We're not going to do anything to the Priest of Ancient Lore opponent? Okay. Well, I think that means I hold the Priest of Ancient Lore back to block. Because I definitely don't want to block the Soul Knife Spy with my Moradin's Disciples. Not if I can help it. Do they block the 2-2? They do, in fact, trade their 3-drop that has done nothing for my 2-drop that has done... Oh, okay, they gave an Instructable or something. Point being, my 2-drop has done a lot more than their 3-drop. Thus far. Yeah, okay. Completely satisfied with this exchange. I would like to play Morden's Disciples in a position where I head on board, which is where Morden's Disciples is the best. Why would they not have good blue cards after seeing how bad it was in AFR? I don't know. I don't think that this format is terribly comparable to AFR. I say as a person who didn't play AFR. Ward 3... That actually really embarrasses my Morden's Disciples. I'm really disappointed. I mean, I could attack and then pay three and then do nothing else. It's really gross. I think it's better to just play the Bronze Walrus. All right. You've done well, opponent. I have successfully been stonewalled by the very good blocker. Calling that a very good blocker feels generous, but I mean, it's solid. I've played a Thornhide Wolves in my day. Ooh. I have to discard two lands? Deal. Oh, I do have to mill my Dragon's Fire that I kind of wanted? That's disappointing. All right, well. The good news is if I draw a land, I can play a Moradin's Disciples, presuming that I have to make an attack that pays three to tap down the Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. So we do find a land. That's something. Do I get to go to combat, opponent? Before things are done. Or do they try to remove my disciple before attacks? Or tap down my disciple before attacks would be really mean. No. Okay. I am allowed to attack. I want to pay for this using the Bronze Walrus, so if they decide to kill my Bronze Walrus, I'm not locked out of playing the Morden's Disciple. Also, I'm planning to use all of my mana this turn anyway, so there's no downside to doing so. Provided Auto Tapper didn't tap all of my white, <laughs> I suppose. Frost Giant is going to tax my mana so much. Ugh, the opponent has a lot of life. Well, I mean, two Moradin's Disciples is... Okay. Well, my opponent decided to... not bounce my Morden's Disciple pre-combat and got punished for it pretty heavily, which is cool. 
Oh, cool, packed weapon. Okay, so I basically can't win now? That's cool. Yeah, okay. The thing I was saying where it didn't seem like a super bomb-dominated format as much as I thought, that's less true. I forgot about this card that is deeply stupid. Oh, hey, cool, never mind. Right, cool. I'm mainboarding a naturalize. That bit's nice. I forgot about that part. Decline. I kind of wonder if I'm supposed to play Warriors of Tiamat there, but I don't think that I'm willing to take the risk that my opponent could draw or could have a counter spell up on a later turn. I think I just absolutely have to do this now. All right. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a whiplashy sequence of turns. <laughs> but I, we have managed to beat the opponent's Hyper Bomb Mythic with my regular Bomb Rare. Okay, so... Oh, Maze of Disruption perpetually gives a creature plus on the slow. I had no idea that was perpetual. So, so, so. Answers to artifacts. I don't have any that I'm not playing. So I have Fireball, Intervention, Technically Dragon's Fire, Uthgard Fury, Sort of Improvised Weaponry, Hmm. My splash options include kind of Poison the Blade, but not really. Grim Bounty, which is double black. You come to a river? So realistically, I have no splashable options that are anywhere close to decent. Or, well, nowhere close to a viable option. I could try to play John Arenicus because it mills the opponent out. And milling is an optional win con. I don't think that's correct for me to do. So, what we can do is make the opponent die by getting their life total below zero and then killing the creature that the pact is equipped to. And they can't, like, re-equip to any other creature at that point because they die as a state-based action. It's getting them to zero and then killing the creature that's the hard part. <laughs> because <laughs> we actually need to have a removal spell that hits it. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Does Packed Weapon give them bonus toughness when it attacks? Yes. Jeez. Ugh. Alright, this is not going good from a playing aggressive creatures on curve standpoint. If you activate the equip ability to swap between creatures while at zero, do you lose? No. Because losing the game to having that much life is not a triggered ability, it is a state-based action, so it does not actually have any downsides until state-based actions are checked, which would not happen until after all. 
Turn two Hobgoblin Captain, turn three Craving on the Hobgoblin Captain, attack against first strike would have been so cool. Uh, but yeah, it would not happen until a player would get priority, which is well after the ability is resolved and moved between creatures. Yuck. All right, opponent has successfully drained us quite a bit. Time to assemble our very powerful 6-3 for striking attacker. And hope that's good enough. <laughs> oh, no packed weapon, please. Hmm. What do I want to do here? I do actually need a land. I don't want to lose my cool creatures, though. It's fine, right? We'll draw more lands. It's not fine. We'll get rid of Knoll Hunting Party, as sad as that makes me. I think I'm just supposed to play Warriors into Warriors. No, I, I mean, they're going to attack with the Vampire Spawn, right? So I get to do four. Well, we'll play the Knoll instead of attacking with the 4-2 this turn. We could have gotten rid of both of the lands. It would have worked. Ooh. Ugh. Well, at least I get to block the 2-3. Uh, they can't make a profitable block here. Craving so far definitely living up to the hopes. Water weird isn't the pact. That's good. That's good. All right, priest, do you draw into anything useful? Ooh, Morden's Disciples. That's actually pretty useful. <laughs> this one little common two-drop is doing so much work. Oh my. All right. Lose three life. Fair. Packed weapon time. No? Okay. Well, this is definitely the part of the game where I turn my cards sideways. Oh, that's a deeply troublingly good answer to both of my cards. That's very mean, opponent. All right, well. I'm gonna cast all of my spells and then pass the turn. One more turn to find Pack Blade, opponent. What you got? Ooh, okay. Vampire Spawn is actually something. Hmm. Do I want to tap down the Frost Giant so that they can't make a good block on the hunting party? Three, four. Paying the three to tap down the Frost Giant means I can't play Disciple and Hunting Party. But I mean, not killing our Hunting Party is a lot like playing a Hunting Party, isn't it? Oh. This was quite bad. I should have played the land pre-combat so I could represent two pumps on the Genasi. Is that gonna matter? It might actually matter. I mean, I, I probably am actually just supposed to go for lethal here, right? Yeah, I think I got caught on the sauce and kind of missed the onboard useful things. Okay. Onboard kill opponent also good. All right, 
So I don't know if turn two Paladin into Craving is as good as turn two First Striker into Craving, but I mean, it is a lot of power that's lifelinking if the opponent doesn't answer it. Soldiers of the Watch, no. Ooh, okay. Kind of have to go with Rabble Rousers to just totally invalidate Solar Soldiers of the Watch over the Steadfast Paladin, I think. Just gonna sit back and do nothing, opponent? Oh my. Alright, well, guess we're attacking then. And probably just playing Rabble Rousers again to block Watch again. Thanks for the follow, Clado. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Alright, well, there's a double team. I'll do the thing where I block now. Is this the part where you untap it and give it plus two, plus two? It is. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty okay with that. Not getting a ton of damage on the opponent, but definitely getting amounts that do things. Okay, Displacer Kitten, miss a land drop. That is something. Let's go ahead and begin applying the pressure. Oh, we're just sacking Displacer Kitten to prevent two damage. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, Craving is a really impressive card. Uh, it is... I haven't actually given anything haste with it, and I haven't actually returned it. Mostly it's just been 3 mana sorcery speed enchantment plus 3 plus 2 has actually been good in every game we've played. My understanding of magic implies that's not usually the case, but like, there are times where that's good, and... The Times Word's not good. I think, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the ability to keep bringing it back uh, not counteracts, but offsets those times where it isn't good immediately. Let's see. I had this exact same choice before between Steadfast Paladin and Valor Singer. Or Steadfast Paladin and Flame Fist. What I was going to do into Valor Singer. And I got rewarded for Flame Fist Dust Guard. So. Looks like I'm getting rewarded for that same decision once again. Alright, opponent. Putting the clock on you. Okay, the opponent has a 3-3 flying artifact, Lantern. No, opponent, I needed that to play my Null Hunting Party this turn. Oh, okay. That's a cool card for the purposes of Null Hunting Party shenanigans, though. Not going to block with your 1-1 to prevent 4 damage, opponent? You sure? I'm actually kind of shocked that they used a removal spell to kill my Flame Fist Dust Guard when they could have blocked with the Artificer, which I think was probably a better play for them. I was like, this doesn't do very much at this point. Is it three power? Oh, and creatures you control. I had no idea this said creatures you control. This card is not as terrible as I thought it was. It doesn't make it good, but that is a pretty big difference. I 
I think my attacks here are still totally fine this way. Like, they kind of have to put the Dragon Fort in front of the Valor Singer, right? Which just leaves them chump blocking with Soldiers of the Watch. Or leaves them not chump blocking with Soldiers of the Watch, I guess. Yeah, so here's my 2 mana 4-4. Four, four, and my 3 mana 3-2 that scries. I think my life total is in a totally fine enough place that I'm just... Comfortable not developing the life linker. It's not uncommon for me to mill like a Hergorja with a two mana land druid and drop the dragonborn as a four mana seven seven. But isn't the two mana mill druid kind of like a little heinous? I was not impressed by that card on the front of it at all. Like, I don't want to have to include that card in my deck. I'm more or less fine with that. I wish they hadn't done it, but... Ooh. All right. Warriors of Tiamat. A good card to have for next turn. Like, if I hadn't blocked the Soldiers of the Watch, the Patriarch's Humiliation still would have stopped the hunting party from having double team or first strike. So they still would have had, like, fine blocks. All right, you can only be used on the opponent's turn which I believe means I am in the mood for swinging out. Two minute creature that doesn't draw land 100% of the time though. So now the opponent takes four. Which leaves us with Warriors of Tiamat that they have no blocker for other than trading with the Lantern. Or they could top deck an absolutely stellar card in this situation. That's kind of a bummer. Oh, okay, well. Uthgard Fury is a wonderful top deck. I don't believe I have good attacks this turn. So we'll leave that attacking business for next turn. Like to see my opponent hit a land draw. That's good. But I can activate Unicorn and get in for four. If they want to. Ugh. Or they could top deck a bomb. All right, that's a pretty huge problem. The full every mode, huh? Dear me. Okay. Whoa, you, no, 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 no. You don't want to swing with that opponent. What? Huh. Okay. I guess their logic is that they trade warriors and a 2-2 and then only take one. Yeah, maybe that's fine. If I don't trade off the Warriors and the Paladin, they get to pump those tutus with the Unicorn. Which kind of bites. They can pump twice on their turn, actually. I kind of can't let them do that, can I? Ugh. Wow, I hate this. Because they can activate the Steadfast Unicorn to give Vigilance. Then attack with everything. And then the Lantern is still untapped, so they can activate the Lantern again. Okay. I, too, can draw good cards, opponent. There's no point in attacking this turn. I should wait until their turn in case they have an indestructibility spell, I guess? Okay, 
So they return Lantern to hand, but then it's not a 3-3, which means it's still basically dead. Kind of punished for accidentally not using the Lantern mana. Doesn't fizzle, because I targeted myself to gain a life. Morgan's Disciples, okay. Hmm. So, like, I could be slightly slower and make a ton of 1-1s here. Five 1-1s to be specific. Yeah, you know what? If I play an attach horn this turn, I really just force them to do one jump block. But if I go absurdly wide, I threaten to just kill them because I have too many creatures for them to block next turn. Hmm. Opponent's creatures are big and get to attack, but I have like infinity life, so that's fine. I have no desire to block any of these creatures. They have four blockers. Block, 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 block. Take five, six. Okay, so they just exactly do not die currently. Hmm. Block, 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 block. Five, get through. Oh, okay, actually, so they have one better than that. So there's no point in attacking with everybody. So in reality, all I'm actually doing is swinging with one creature and forcing a chump block. Maybe it's better to play the Hippogriff? And threaten the kill next turn? Hmm. But I'm also threatening very strongly to just kill them normally. Because my board is still hyper wide. I do start actually having to chump lock this turn, though. Six, eight, yeah, this is lethal. So if I block like this, I lose two creatures. If they pump, they do eight, I go to two. If they have a one mana pump spell, I go to one. This loses them a blocker. I have to have one thing to chump block. Then I do five, six, seven, eight. I think this is fine. I think this is fine. Yeah, and if they don't activate a unicorn in order to play another blocker, then they don't get to kill the extra creature. So now if they use one mana... Oh, I guess using one mana plus one plus three on the unicorn saves the unicorn and kills another blocker. That might make them not dead. Block, 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 tick four. Yeah, that makes them not dead. Humiliation killing that thing. Does that make them not dead? I think they had to kill a 2-2, not the Rabble Rouser. To save their blocker. Alright, so now it's block, block, take five. Oh, okay. So, still not dead. Hmm. 
All right, well, we'll just keep slowly chipping away. If I move this over, this dies, which I don't really see a need for. They currently kill me if they give the disciples flying. I guess I should play around that by just playing the hippogriff. I don't think there's a lot of easy ways for them to do that, but I should play around it. Okay. <laughs> wow, I was not expecting that to be so close. Maybe I played that slightly too slow? I really thought that I was going to have very trivial lethal on the following turn. Oh yeah, Cloak of the Bat's definitely a possibility. And playing the second flyer played around. Alright, that uh, was what? Four wins? No losses? Wait, did we drop a game with this deck? We probably did. I mean, this didn't... This felt solid? I mean, this... Aside from not having as much removal as I think would be ideal in the two and three drop slot, this was a deck with a lot of good cards. Very good cards. Ancient Dragon and Soon's Intervention, I think, are deeply solid, but not like... Hyper bombs. I think mostly this just got by on a very respectable green red or white red base shell, but yeah, okay. I don't think this is like a 10 out of 10 deck. I think this is probably like a respectable 8 out of 10, probably. But still good, still good.